The Titanic is not a love story. It is a tale of managerial mistakes, a natural disaster, and a catastrophe of engineering. When we scientifically question how the Titanic could sink easily, though it was the magnificent engineering marvel of its era, by going beyond the romantic narrative of a poor guy and rich girl, we can see the emergence of a fascinating scientific story in the light of the data accumulated over the last 110 years. I guess it is high time to tell the real story of the Titanic. This is the scientific story of the Titanic. Manufactured in 1912, the Titanic was not only the largest cruise ship ever produced, but also it was the largest ship ever built compared to any ship produced in another category in history. With a length of 169 meters, a weight of 46,328 gross tonnage, and a capacity of 3,547 passengers, it stood as the largest ship of its era. Indeed, there was a ship named Olympic, which was produced as a twin of it before, and it was less known, and it did not sink. Even the Olympic was named after that ship category. So it was a kind of Olympic ship, and there was a Britannic except for the Titanic and Olympic in this Olympic class. This Britannic sank within 55 minutes after hitting a German mine in 1916 in the Aegean Sea near the island of Kea, when it was used as a hospital ship during World War I. Even Britannic has the title of being the largest ship that was sunk during WWI. However, 1,036 of its 1,066 passengers were saved with the help of the conditions that the Aegean Sea was warmer, the ship had plenty of lifeboats, and prompt rescue efforts came right away. The worth of $23,500,000 in today's currency? This ship lies down at the bottom of the beautiful waters of the Aegean Sea today. As you may know, the twin of the Titanic, Olympic, was the only ship that never sank between the transatlantic cruise ships in this category. Nevertheless, they did not gain popularity maybe because of not sharing the same inauspicious fate with the Titanic. However, our topic is neither about Britannic nor the Olympic today, but about the Titanic and its death web, which was predetermined the moment it was born. The iceberg which caused the sinking of the Titanic was 3,200 km from Belfast, Ireland, where the ship was constructed and would deal with the fatal strike. To the western side, Grandland was born almost simultaneously with the Titanic. The snow on the top of this iceberg calving from land-based glaciers accumulated over a period of time extending up to 100,000 years ago. It constituted a colossal mass of 75 million tons, Yet these extraordinary figures are quite commonplace for icebergs. In other words, this iceberg had no special features that made it stand out. It was just one of approximately 40,000 icebergs formed every year. Surprisingly, even today, these continuously forming icebergs do not move towards the more heavily trafficked southern latitudes immediately after their formation. Due to ocean currents, they initially advance northward along the Baffin Bay between Greenland and Canada. Then they turn westward and later southward, descending into the Atlantic Ocean. Most of these icebergs get stuck in the shallow waters of the Gulf Shores. For this reason, nearly none of them reach the Atlantic Ocean. However, an extraordinary event would happen in the year when the Titanic was going to take its first voyage. I will come to that, but three critical errors that would cause the Titanic disaster were committed during the manufacturing phase. The former of these happened two years before the ship went into the production stage in a meeting held between the chief designer of the ship, Alexander Carlyle, and the investor, the owner of the ship, Joseph Bruce Ismay. Ismay wanted the famous grand stairs that Kate Winslet descended in a movie to be as magnificent as possible. For this reason, he pushed the boundaries of the structural integrity of the ship and the dividing walls splitting the different floors of the ship were constructed to be as low as possible to make more space for the stairs. It was asked that the water level of these compartments, designed in a way to confine the water, should be as high as possible so that the ship does not sink when it takes the damage, or they make it more difficult to sink. Nonetheless, these compartments were constructed to be only three meters above the water surface due to design decisions like the grand stairs. This mistake would lead the ship to take on water much faster than it should have. The second design flaw was made in the deck layout. The Titanic had the capacity to carry 64 lifeboats. Even though it was quite uncomfortable, 
Each of them was able to carry approximately 65 to 70 people in case it was fully loaded. In most cases, the lifeboats are not totally filled, but in case it is necessary, it is possible to carry 4,500 people with the lifeboats. As you can see, this is far beyond the ship's passenger capacity of 3,547 people. However, while Bruce Ismay was examining the models of Alexander Carlyle, he concluded that the number of lifeboats planned to be 48, not 64 initially, would create a crowded and messy appearance on the deck, and he requested a reduction in the number of lifeboats to 16, with four of them being collapsible Engelhart lifeboats. Henceforth, the capacity of lifeboats was just reduced to only 1,178 people. This accounts for 53% of the 2,223 people that the Titanic accommodated while it was sinking. The third error occurred during the manufacturing phase of the ship. In 1,912, the year when the use of steel just started to emerge gradually in ship production, the ships were previously built from iron. But iron is a much softer material compared to steel and it can be easily disintegrated. Material scientists have observed that interspersing carbon atoms between iron atoms even at a rate of 1 and 2 percent can create an alloy much stronger than pure iron. Thus, the material that we call the steel was born. Yet the robust nature of that steel made it harder to use as a construction material. For instance, we used the rivet stock, a mushroom-shaped connecting element, to join the huge plaques together. The tail of this mushroom is passed through the holes opened in the metals that will be leashed together and then placed into the hole up to the head. Subsequently, it is fastened up and a tremendous amount of pressure is applied. Under this pressure, that swelling tail reaches one, five times its diameter. In this way, these metal pieces are connected to each other. Once the rivet stock is placed, it is not that easy to pull it out. Most of the time, it is necessary to disintegrate the huge plaques as well. For that reason, the rivet stock is classified as a permanent connecting element. Indeed, this permanence would not pose any obstacle for a massive iceberg. But the thing that I call the error in production was that the widespread riveting machines in use at that time were produced for the iron rivet stocks. The rivet stock machines for the steel had started to be produced, but they were quite large. They could not be miniaturized yet as much as the ones today. Nonetheless, it was possible to use the steel rivet stocks in the body of the Titanic in many parts. However, it was impossible to insert these steel rivet machines into the front parts of the ship and place the steel rivets in their places as the parts curled and approached each other as they approached the shoulders on the bow. For that reason, the iron rivet stocks were used rather than the steel rivet stocks at the front parts of the ship. These softer and weaker rivet stocks could be easily disintegrated even in a 5 mm displacement, and this would cause the iceberg to open the ship's body like a zipper. This chain of mistakes would have been prevented with a single decision. In order for the commercial ships to set sail, they needed to get permission from the British Chamber of Commerce. The travel allowance could not have been given to the ship, stating that the lifeboat capacity was far below the passenger capacity, but the minimum lifeboat capacity was determined with a steady number, not with the passenger capacity at that time. That steady number was 1,060 back then. Consequently, it was concluded that the Titanic had enough lifeboat capacity and the travel allowance was given to the ship. A series of other misfortunes occurred a month or so before the Titanic set sail. The captain of the ship was John Smith, the most experienced captain of the White Star Line, the manufacturer of the Titanic, and Smith's pleasant conversation and captaincy was so popular that millionaires such as Guggenheim and J.P. Morgan were changing their tickets just to get on the ships under Smith's command. Mr. Smith had received the title of Captain of Millionaires Among the Rich. In a twist of fate, Smith was going to retire after completing his journey on the Titanic. The Titanic would have set sail on March 1912, but the news that its twin, the Olympic, hit with another British ship named HMS Hawk and was hard hit by it arrived while the preparation was still going on. Therefore, the ship went into the harbor for an urgent repair, and that most of the workers repaired the ship delayed the journey of the Titanic for a month. This delay necessitated a change of crew in which Captain Smith could work. For instance, the third captain of the Olympic, Henry Wald, was appointed instead of the third captain, David Blair. 
If you ask why I'm telling so much detail, the dismissed David Blair accidentally took with him the key to the room where the belongings of the crew were observing the horizon, also known as the crow's nest, more technically known as the bowl while he was packing his belongings. For this reason, a sufficient number of binoculars could not be given to the observers observing the sea at the peak of the ship. Actually, there were enough binoculars on the bridge, but nobody dealt with carrying the binoculars to the crow's nest. Under all these circumstances, these mistakes would have resulted in the iceberg being noticed much later. On April 10, 1912, the Titanic set sail from the port of Southampton, England to New York, USA on its last voyage, even if it was not yet aware of it. If there were binoculars, would the situation change? It is hard to know because there was no moon in the night sky between April 14th and April 15th, the night when the Titanic sank. For this reason, there was no light source except for the lights of the ship and the stars. Additionally, a slight fog created almost a heat haze on the water of the ocean, which was extremely quiet that day due to the extreme cold. All of these were a fatal combination for the iceberg. If the ocean had been a little rough, the water hitting the edges of the iceberg would have made it more noticeable. If there had been the moon, Noticing the iceberg would have been much easier. If the weather had been a little warmer, maybe that over the ocean dredge would not have formed. These are difficult mistakes to intervene in, but an unforgivable mistake was made in the ship's communications room while underway. The Titanic was the leader of its era, not only in terms of size, but also in terms of technology. It had the most advanced wireless communication systems available at that time, of course. Don't think of computers or anything. It was still communicated with Morse code, but while the communication range of many ships was only around 400 km, the communication range could be increased to 650 km thanks to the receivers and transmitters placed in the 60-meter turrets of the Titanic. This communication network was really important for the ships passing through the Atlantic Ocean because they could warn each other about the dangers that they saw. The icebergs were one of these dangers. In other words, it was nothing new that in the Atlantic Ocean, there was the danger of the icebergs. In fact, for this reason alone, Captain Smith had taken a route further south than he would have normally taken, knowing that they would have to sail in such a late and dangerous month as April. His purpose was to stay further south of these icebergs, which could not pass easily beyond 48 degrees north latitude. Nevertheless, there was an event that the chance of its occurrence was less than 1%. That year, dozens of icebergs succeeded in landing south of 48 degrees north latitude together. Nowadays, there is a crew for international iceberg roundsmen that was founded after the Titanic catastrophe to follow these icebergs merely. Every year, they scan the iceberg corridor in the Atlantic Ocean and the ship routes connecting Europe and America to determine the status and location of the icebergs and instantly report them to the ships. This crew has reported the number of icebergs landing 48 degrees north latitude as zero in recent years. But for instance, there were 324 icebergs doing that in 2017. That is to say, there were so many glaciers that came off in some years and a part of them could reach an extraordinary distance. That is what happened in 1912. If that year had been an ordinary year like the others, perhaps the Titanic would not have sunk. The unforgivable mistake that I said happened in the communications room was that the management was giving very little salary to the communications crew. Their main source of income was not to provide security communications about the ship, but to convey the messages that the passengers on the ship wanted to send to their relatives on land and to convey the messages from them to the passengers they were able to make a lot more money from this business through tips. Naturally, the communications crew was also focusing on this. The Californian came across a massive iceberg at 22.20 in the ship's clock, and Captain Lord decided to wait without going further till the morning. Before leaving the gate, he supposed that he saw the lights of a ship eastward, but he was not sure whether it was a rising star or not. Lord continued to move toward the cabinet of the engineers and talked to the chef and he told his plans to stop. While they were talking, they saw the lights of the ship coming closer. Lord asked Evans whether he knew any ship in the area and Evans replied, just the Titanic. Lord again asked Evans to report that the Californian was stopped 
and its surroundings were full of icebergs. Lord ordered Evans to warn all the other ships in the area, and he did so. The wireless operator of the Titanic on duty, Jack Phillips, was busy at the moment cleaning the pileup of messages of the passengers in the wireless station located in Newfoundland Cape Race, which was 1,300 km away. The message of Evans that the Californian was stopped and was surrounded by the icebergs was strongly heard in the Titanic due to the relative proximity of the two ships, and he drowned out a separate message that Phillips was in the process of taking from Cape Race, prompting Phillips to berate Evans. Shut up, shut up, stay away, I'm busy. Phillips never forwarded this message to the hyperlink, but Evans, in his defense, did not add the letters MSG, which stands for Master Service Graham, at the beginning of the message, as is the case with all general purpose messages. After a while, Evans felt that he did his duty. Even though Phillips refused the message harshly, he turned off the wireless equipment and went to bed. The Californian was the closest ship while the Titanic was sinking. The two duty holders observing the horizon without binoculars in the crow's nest, which was 29 meters above the deck, saw a glitter on the horizon at about 11.30 p.m. But they could not figure out what it was in the first place. The heat haze in the place that formed where the iceberg met the cold waters of the ocean blocked their visions. By the time it met the Titanic, this iceberg had been floating in the ocean for one and a half years precisely, and it had managed to reach 41 degrees north latitude. It had a width of 90 meters and a length of 22 meters above the water. According to assumptions, it had melted down to a mass of 1,500,000 million tonnage at that moment. Nine minutes after seeing that glitter, the observers noticed the danger only a few 110 meters from the collision. The crew immediately grabbed the phone and said those three famous words. Right across the iceberg, the message was received by second mate William Murdoch instead of Captain Smith, who was resting at the time. In just 37 seconds, the alarms went off. The engines were completely stopped and began to be reversed. It was a routine maneuver that slowly turned the ship around, but it was probably one of the wrong decisions made. In order to stop the ship, at least 800 meters of distance was necessary, but at that point, the iceberg was just 274 meters away. The Titanic, whose engines began to reverse, started to slide towards the port side slowly, that is, to the left side compared to the prow. However, this return was not fast enough, and it was too late. The Titanic hit the massive iceberg diagonally, and the dentations of the iceberg ripped down the iron rivet stocks like a zipper that I mentioned earlier. If the decision to turn the ship around had not been made, and only it had slowed down and directly hit the iceberg from the prow, probably the Titanic would have taken greater damage, but it wouldn't have sunk. Because generally the prows of the ships are designed in a way to take greater damages, as it is expected from them to hit something, the ships absorb most of the energy as they bend on the front sides, just like in car accidents. In this way, the side plates are not opened and there is only water intake in the front, which is much easier to prevent. Indeed, ships that had previously collided directly with icebergs or other ships were able to stay afloat without sinking. According to calculations, even four of the 16 compartments on the Titanic, which were designed to take on water, could float the ship if they were filled with water. But since the ship hit the iceberg from the side, a total of one square meter of slits opened along five compartments at the same time, and seven tons of water began to fill the ship per second. The orchestra of the ship continued to play the music to keep the motivation of the passengers high. Hundreds of people tried to escape by throwing themselves into cold waters of minus two degrees, but they froze to death, most of them trying to reach their loved ones. Before the Titanic sank, it split in two, killing dozens of people trapped underneath. Hundreds of people, mainly second-class and third-class poorer passengers, drowned in their cabins. During all these events, another mistake was made. Let me tell you that. Captain Smith was shocked, as also shown in the movie. His last journey was indeed about to turn into his last. The so-called unsinkable Titanic sank in just 2.5 hours, which was a surprisingly high sinking speed, there were not enough lifeboats on board. Signals for help were quickly sent to nearby ships, but the nearest ship, the California, never came to the aid of the Titanic as it had turned off its radio communication as a result of rudeness. The next closest ship, the RMS Carpathia, was 93 kilometers away and was a slower ship. Even if he had arrived at a top speed of 31 kilometers per H, he would not have arrived before 3.4 hours, which he did. When the first ship, 
The Carpathia arrived on the scene. The ship had begun its journey towards the bottom of the ocean at 3,840 meum about one hour, 30 minutes ago. In the moment of the crisis he was in, Captain Smith, struggling with all these horrible realities with 1,500 passengers on the ship that could not be put into the lifeboats, mumbled to his assistants that the priority should be given to women and children. Some parts of the crew misinterpreted this order and they applied this order as putting only women and children on the lifeboats. For this reason alone, they separated families from each other. They didn't let the fathers get on the lifeboats. Additionally, as the order of the captain was so, they landed the lifeboats on water, whose number was also a few, before they were fully loaded. This, in turn, led to an exponential increase in the number of deaths, especially in men. The Titanic didn't sink just because it hit an iceberg. The Titanic sank due to design flaws. It sank due to the selection of elements and technological mistakes. Due to the deficiency in the equipment, the lack of communication, the lack of appreciation that its workers deserved, and because of greed, the Titanic sank. Due to a combination of bad luck and a series of wrong decisions, many of which were preventable, the Titanic sank. But things have changed a lot since the Titanic. To put it simply, the International Iceberg Roundsman was established. Britain and America came together to review the law of the sea. For instance, they changed the number of the lifeboats according to the number of passengers. Turning the radio communications of the ships to each other has been forbidden. Limitations have been imposed on the minimum height of the dividing walls of ships. As you can see, the history of shipping was also written in blood. Goodbye and see you in the next video.